Welcome back. We now revisit the ever-growing problem of deteriorating infrastructure in Ulster County. Ulster County Executive Michael Hine recently talked to us about his plans for repairing Ulster County's roads and bridges. Here's what he had to say. I mean, first, it's important to understand what we're really talking about here. Infrastructure that was built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and everyone was, again, it's incredible across our whole country. It really helped make our nation wonderful. Um, is a situation that is now crumbling. They haven't been properly maintained. Not in, we're not talking about just Ulster County. We're talking about across the entire state, the Northeast, and much of the entire nation. And now it's about making the kind of investments that are necessary to get caught up, to make sure that we can have safe roads and bridges, and not just roads and bridges that are similar to what they used to be. Again, we shouldn't lose sight. Bridges that were designed in the 50s were designed when the largest trucks that were crossing them were box trucks. Now we have massive tractor trailers going across and, and again, increased traffic loads. Uh, so we're in a situation where we're redesigning what bridges can and should look like, taking into consideration pedestrian traffic as well and making sure that we expand the safety issues. Our roads, it's not just about paving over what you had in the past, it's about making sure that shoulders are significantly wider. So again, bicycle, bicyclists and joggers and everyone alike are again so much safer along the, uh, the roadways as well. And reconstructing the underneath foundations of the roads as well to make sure that they're great roads, not just for a short term, but great uh, roads for a long time to come. What most people really have not seen is significant infrastructure work going on from a maintenance perspective within their communities because so many communities are struggling to find those dollars to be able to invest in infrastructure. Here in Ulster County, this really is the residual impact of being responsible with our finances for an extended period of time. We're investing $3.5 million right out of the blocks to leverage $10 million in infrastructure projects and an additional $5 million on top of that of what is called CHIPS money to expand the, the um, paving process. So what we're really talking about in Ulster County is $15 million of infrastructure work, really an unprecedented amount in one year, and it really truly will help in the catch-up process when it comes to maintenance. We were talking about roads that are built in the 40s, 50s, and 60s and designed in that same time period as well. We're excited about the idea of making areas in front of schools significantly safer, wider, enhancing those roads systems to make sure that they work for, the, for modern technology, modern usage, and again, the pedestrians that are, again, using them and, and hopefully enjoying them as well. One of the keys, and that's one of the things that made our country so great, is the capacity for, uh, for vehicles and for products and services to be able to move all across our entire country. That is being called into question when you have road systems and, and bridges that are being red flagged or reduced uh, traffic loads and a whole host of other things that can happen when they become near the end of their lifespan. We've simply looked at this and said that's unacceptable. So we've redesigned how we do bridges. Again, we're getting actively involved in how we do bridges as well. So it's not just a typical standard old bridge with the infrastructure above head. Much of the, much, much of the superstructure now is below. They're significantly safer. Again, they're much wider, so they're prepared for pedestrian usage as well. And they're the kinds that can open up vistas so people can truly see. So there's a beautiful side to what we're doing as well. Throughout this process, it's about des designing with our engineers the best, absolute best options available. And it's also about working with the community. When we talk about the kinds of bridges, oftentimes for a similar dollar value, there can be multiple types of bridges that can be used. And in the past, the bureaucracy, the government, would simply tell you what it's going to be. I don't believe in that. Again, it's our communities making choices for themselves. So now the county is going to be working with specific communities, uh, especially when you're seeing high volume traffic areas where a closure of a bridge would be so impactful to the local economy. We're seeing a couple of actions. Not only would we be being really engaging the community in what that bridge is going to look like and having them have a choice in the process, but we're also talking about having a temporary bridge side by side with that through the entire construction project, especially in those areas where there isn't a wonderful detour option available and it would be so impactful to the economy. So before we take down one bridge or do any work to that bridge, there's a secondary bridge side by side with it so traffic flow patterns don't stop. Well, 
right now it's an awful it's awful cold outside so as soon as it begins to melt a little bit and, and it becomes construction season we'll be breaking ground on a number of projects we'll work throughout throughout this entire year and we hope to get the vast majority of that 15 million dollar work done in 2015 so it's very exciting there'll be a significant amount of work going on throughout our entire county and our county is geographically the size of rhode island so the opportunity to take and make a real impact in a short window of time is very exciting for our DPW as well as for our citizens as well. We'll work through the entire process in a number of ways. Some of it will be done in-house. We have an incredible DPW. They work, work well. Uh, there's a, they do some of the bridges we do in-house. But again, some of them will work in public-private partnerships through the process. And we're moving through the procurement side of that right now. This concept of building a better Ulster County is really about demanding more from government, making sure that we're able to deliver infrastructure that people not only demand, but they deserve. And it's about being fiscally responsible in other areas of government to make sure that the dollars are available to do so. That's what we're doing here in Ulster County, and we hope to be a model around the entire region. That's all the time we have for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Amy Green. Tune in next week for another edition of Hudson Valley Week in Review. Good night.